Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The long-awaited draft update to the Integrated Resource Plan for Electricity has been published for public comment. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss the document and the initial reaction to it. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. What is the background to the so-called IRP 2023? Well, the IRP is meant to be a living document because the demand assumptions, for instance, as well as the technology costs, in the electricity sector are changing all the time. But South Africa has had this tendency of having very long gestation periods. So we had the IRP 2010, and there were a number of false starts in trying to get that updated. I think from about 2015, the initiatives were really uh, underway to try to update the 2010 version, which was massively out of date by then. Um, and it took until the end of 2019 before they eventually published uh, using assumptions, some of which that went back to early, much earlier on in the, the sort of planning process. So it was immediately an outdated document, but it basically gave a line of march. And uh, it's a very important document. It's a legal instrument. It's what the, the Minister of Mineral Resources and Energy uses to set procurement determinations. And we've seen a number of those determinations come out. And that sort of sets in motion on the public sector side, public procurement side, uh, the procurement rounds. So the procurement of renewable energy, and now we see some of the other technologies, battery for instance, there's been procurement there, and we're entering into a, a gas to power procurement as well, as well as continuing with the renewables procurement. So a very important document, supposed to be a living document, but we don't tend to update it as it's meant to, ideally yearly, but I suppose in the mind of most people, at least every two years. But already it's, it's 2024 20, now, and it took a very long time for the, the department to, you know, socialise internally within government this updated draft. So it was named quite ironically RP 2023 because it was published on the 4th of January 2024, only a few week, days ago. What are some of the main changes compared with the current policy? I think the, the, there's three big changes in the, in the plan. Obviously, demand uh, has not kept up every time we do a new RP because of the very low growth. Uh, the demand projections have moderated quite massively. So there's a, a new demand path up until 2030, which is much more moderate to than what is in the integrated resource plan of 2019, the prevailing plan. Big, big change is the amount of gas to power in the plan. So the current version has 3,000 megawatts of new gas to power. The version that's uh, proposed has over 7,000 megawatts of new gas to power in the plan. So that's the big, big change. And the third, I'd say, is to start recognizing the private sector, uh, the, 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 the sort of liberalization that's happened in the uh, in the electricity supply market where uh, projects of any size can now proceed without a license. And we've seen a ma quite a big uptake and I think there's going to be an accelerated uptake um, in, in that from business as business seeks to navigate this world of continuing and intense uh, load shedding and a very steep and uncertain tariff path uh, from the incumbent uh, at Eskom. So on both those are the reasons why the private sector uh, is investing quite heavily in its own uh, capacity, its own energy. And then households, <coughs> uh, rooftop solar has, has been a massive uptick uh, during 2023. And that I think is a trend that will be set to continue both at commercial buildings, but even at the, the sort of residential level. So, so, but I think ultimately the very big change is the gas to power allocation in this plan relative to what is in the current uh, RP, which has a knock-on effect, especially if you give the lower demand to the other technologies, particularly wind and solar, and particularly wind. It's a massive uh, decline in the, the wind allocation. The solar allocations also declined, but we, there's, a, 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 there's a distributed generation of 900 megawatts a year, which looks quite measly in, in many ways, but that a lot of that will be solar PV. So solar not as badly affected probably overall, but in terms of um, wind, it's a, it's a big, big drop. What has the initial reaction been? 
I think it's been uh, sh uh, it's shock, but not surprised. I think there's a feeling that this is a political economy document rather than a techno-economic document. Whether that's a fair assessment or not, we'll have to see as more study is made and there's more engagement around the plan. So uh, we know that the current electric uh, energy minister is uh, a strong advocate of uh, so-called clean coal, which uh, does not appear in Horizon 1, but does appear in the horizon beyond 2030. Um, is a big advocate of gas to, gas and gas to power. And those are heavily reflected, especially the gas to power in this document. So that has raised a lot of suspicion uh, right up front. Now, the way that the technically that's been justified is that one, as I mentioned, the lower demand, so it's going to crowd out some of those additional renewables. But the, the, the big thing is that they've hardwired two, two actually three gas to power projects that uh, into the, the uh, 2023 version. The first is the car power ship, which is one, over 1,200 megawatts. And we know that there's a lot of uncertainty there because uh, uh, at the, by the end of December, those projects had failed to reach financial close and therefore lost their good access budget quotes from Eskom. So a lot of uncertainty there. Then there's a 3,000 megawatt RPP gas to power program. And we know that uh, the RPP office, which falls under the DMRE, uh, has released um, a request for proposals for that initial 2,000 site agnostic and has reserved another 1,000 megawatts uh, for the Kuka area. So that's 3,000 megawatts of RPP. And then the, the other determination that's been hardwired into the, the 2023 RP is the Eskom gas to power project in Richards Bay, uh, which is also set for 3,000 megawatts. So there you can see the over 7,000 megawatts of gas that basically crowds out uh, the renewables and the other technologies massively. So the initial reaction is skepticism, shock but not surprise, and quite a lot of resistance because if you look at the rest of the world, uh, there's definitely a strong push and we saw it with the latest renewable report coming out of the International Energy Agency, where we've seen this massive uptick, especially in solar PV installations globally, and a trajectory that's going to be record-breaking right around the world, you know, especially in China, but right around the world, record-breaking installations, especially of solar PV, but also of other renewable technologies, uh, notably onshore wind and offshore wind, but both of those are facing more headwinds, the IEA say, but solar definitely. And uh, this is South Africa with such good solar resources, so it somewhat, it's somewhat shocking that our plan is actually curtailing the amount of solar coming into the system in some ways, or allocating for a lower solar. And we see other RPs, similar plans that have come out of similar countries with similar resources, like Australia, which really have almost a hockey stick approach to their, their renewables deployment. And what we're going to have is a more, not quite a flat lining, but it's not going to be the steep rise that we see in the rest of the world. And this uh, is, um, you know, it's not going to fix uh, in terms of how electricity plays a role in the broader economy. So we know that electricity is going to play a bigger big and bigger role, not only in industrial processes, where in South Africa it's already a big uh, player, but uh, also in uh, mobility. And this will be in industrial and in mobility directly or indirectly. So for instance, in mobility, you'll have directly through electric vehicles. And the, we can see that, that that trend is a mega trend and it's coming and it's something that we have to get on board with. Otherwise, we're gonna lose our manufacturing capability uh, in terms of our OEMs, for instance, because it's very geared towards exports and the, the market is shifting towards electric vehicles, and then indirectly. And that indirect is generally uh, sort of the medium is hi green hydrogen. And there, there's a number of uh, cases, mobility being one, mostly on the heavy, heavy duty sort of transport, uh, shipping, uh, the, and aviation, so sustainable aviation fuels, but also in industrial processes. So we're talking about green steel and those sort of things. So without that sort of sort of surge in renewable electricity into the system and having a bigger integrated energy view, which we'd never have had because we've never had an integrated energy plan, we've only had an integrated resource plan. We're not going to be a player really in this hydrogen economy. So 
this plan is sort of a, a business as usual plan. It doesn't provide a vision for the way the system is changing. It, it it seems to hardwire certain technologies and doesn't hardwire the, <laughs> the same ministerial determinations uh, for solar and wind, for instance, so that is questionable. So I think the reaction, uh, I think, is only natural, that this is highly sceptical. Why is this happening? And we know that the background and this issue of intent, what is the intent behind it, in the background is the continual statements in support of fossil fuels out of the minister. What happens now? What happens now is that uh, there's a public participation process and at the moment it's really reserved for written comments. And the argument there is that we need to do this at a much more accelerated pace. We can't have another situation where we start in 2015 and we end in 2019. Can't have that sort of gestation. So I have sympathy for that view. But on the other hand, these are major shifts and these have major implications into the future of the electricity industry. As I mentioned, it's misaligned in so many ways to where electricity, what role electricity is going to play in the economy directly and indirectly to our hydrogen ambitions. So the public has to be able to state that. At this stage, all we have is two workshops that are proposed for January next week and then the following uh, towards the end of January where it basically sounds like a top-down DMRE telling the line and people may be asking some questions, although the DMRE said they may create some space for people to comment at those workshops. And then you have to, by the end of February, submit your written submissions, and then it will go and be socialised at the NEDLAC processes where business, government and labour meet, and then they'll take it to Cabinet for approval, uh, hoping sort of by April this year. It's a very ambitious timeline, I think they also admit that. But I think that's not really acceptable with the shifts that we see in this plan, with the questions around the assumptions. Actually, belatedly, at least the department has released, you know, the, some of the technical information that has informed the assumptions because when they first published a very scant document, it had nothing. So people had no idea where this was coming from. Now we have a bit better visibility, but still not the visibility that we need to have a proper engagement. So I think this really needs to go through a proper public participation process. There needs to be oral argument, at the very least, so that people know what the opposition is, so that when the final reworked, revised, public comment, socialised document uh, uh, emerges from the department, we can see whether they've taken it seriously or not. You know, written comments, no one really sees. So I think we have to have a much more spotlight on this. It's a very important uh, document. Not that it's the only game in town because there's, you know, the private sector is doing what's rational. They're just putting in <laughs> the wind and solar that's rational and the storage that's associated with that. Uh, and they're expecting the government to come to the party on the grid, you know, and allow for that because that would be the sort of rational plan. So there is another game and there is another, but it sets a framework, it sets guardrails that are wrong. So people need to be able to engage with this, say this, openly and, uh, and contest it and see if government is responsive to that. And at the moment, that's not the intention of the DMRE. Their intention is update as quickly as possible. Thank you. That's the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.